All right, guys. So what we're going to do is I just set this up and realized that I do not have the knife in my pocket. So give me a second. I'm going to go grab it. And what we have tonight is I wanted to get a good view of this. This is the Gavco 7. It is the seventh folding knife that Mike Gavick ever made. What you've got is, so from what Elliot told me, this is either S30 or S35VN steel, titanium, handmade titanium scales. All of this is handmade. Mike Gavick made this all by hand. And Mike and Elliot are really good friends. Now, what I will say is this knife, is very sharp and there's very minimal edge grind so you guys talk about you hear me talk about convex edges look at that convex edge that is so convex and i was like man elliot this is sharp and he's like it's because it's the teen Elliot. it must be teen is what uh, apparently mike told him this apparently was a tool around the shop for a long time used to get splinters out and shards of titanium and aluminum and steel out of their fingers. I need to cut my fingernails. Been so busy. Um, so yeah, and Mike did some pretty interesting patterning on this. Pocket scale is really interesting. This is a really, really nice carry knife. I carried this a few times. I have to say sometimes the detent on it, if you're holding it, is a little strong. If you're if you're on the lock bar, you have to, to push it. But the thumb studs work incredibly well, and they are the they're the stop pins. So not only are they the deployment device, they are the stop pins. So it's kind of cool to get to see some of Mike's original early work. Um, it's really, really, really cool. Um, and you can tell it's early because if you look at this knife, you can see that there's a little bit, his uh, plunge lines, just a little bit off, which makes me feel awesome that a guy like Mike Gavick has got a problem with his, uh, with his plunge lines on some of his first knives because this was his seventh knife. I've only made three fixed blades that are ground like this that aren't. Um, that are not a chisel ground neck knife. So to see that Mike was still still having problems up till number seven, I, it makes it makes me feel not not happy that he's ha he had those issues, but it lets me see light at the end of the tunnel. Like, hey, even Mike had problems with this. So yeah, I just wanted to do a video about this. Elliot let me borrow this and carry it, and I I have to say it carries so well. And I didn't do much cutting with it, except, you know, just minimal day-to-day -day tasks. It does a very good job. Now, the thing that I think is awesome is this unique, you got the flat here, and then this swedge grind meets on both sides. And it, it almost gives it a, like, uh, it almost looks like refractional light through a prism. It's pretty cool. Um, it is a frame lock. It does not have an insert. There's no insert on this, but there is no lock stick either. So it's pretty, pretty smooth. And it's, it's not even a 50% lock up. So this is a very nice gentleman's forward. Not real big, carries real nice and small. It's, it's not heavy at all. So, yeah, let me get this turned around and we'll, we'll look at each other and talk for a minute. So you guys know, a lot of these guest blades that I wind up with come from Elliot's shop. Um, I was doing a live Instagram feed a little bit ago and I was telling the guys, you know, uh, about the burr when you're sharpening. That's something I'm going to do in a later video where I talk about how that can affect and make you think a knife is sharp uh, if you don't know how to remove the burr or know when the burr is formed and know that you have a burr while you're sharpening. So it's just one of those things like, it's one of those things that can stop people from getting their knives as sharp as they possibly could. Um, sometimes people think that their knife is sharp and it's just because they feel that burr and then what happens is the second you use it, that burr breaks off. So the burr is just a 
an accumulation of material at the at the edge that's like a little wire um, because you can only get the steel so thick or so thin before it gets loose like that and it wants to form that little wire but when you touch it with your fingers it's gonna feel like it's biting and things like that so it's just another one of those things that can get in the way if you don't know how to to deal with it um, and just a little you know um, Sometimes it's as simple as having a piece of hard wood. We'll pretend this is wood, and then when you're sharpening, you you just put that on there and really no weight, just drag it through, and it'll break that edge off. I use a wine cork. My friend Nico uh, provides me with corks on a regular basis, and so it's just one of those things that I have available to me that I use. What was up with that? Um, to do some stuff, and I, I just think that, you know, I've had people tell me, he's like, oh, I had a guy say to me, he's like, um, you know, you tell people like how you sharpen, don't you think you're going to lose customers? And I was like, you know what? It's taken me 20 years. It's taken me 20 years to get to where I can do what I do freehand. And even if I showed everybody every step of what I do, knowledge acquired and knowledge applied are two different things. So I don't foresee it being something that will affect my customer base. I don't, I mean, and I, I'll tell people, you know, if you're going to try to do what I do, don't do it on an expensive knife. Do it on like, do it on a $5 swap meat knife. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking about doing, and let me know how you guys feel about this. PBR, red, white, and blue. No, don't, don't tell me how I feel about that. This is <laughs> something else. Um, so I did a live Instagram feed the other day, and there was a couple of people on the live Instagram feed that said, you should do a video, and like an hour and a half long video, post it to YouTube, make it private, and then charge 100 to $150 per person for that, and basically have it be like a class. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I I think it would be I think it's it sounds like a good idea, but I think it could, you know, it could easily be something that people are like, "Oh, this motherfucker is trying to get money." Yeah, I'm trying to get money. I I'm, I'm trying anything I can to make money. That is what it, being an entrepreneur is all about. That's why the Patreon was was a big and people flipped out about that. And I haven't gotten any new Patreons. I get $70 a month. That's So, I told you that there's a new there was one of these in my near future. I got one of these and then I did the video with Matt's. And so what this is, is this was $75. I get $76 a month from Patreon. The whole plan here is I'm going to take that money and I'm going to keep reinvesting it. So this knife is going to get sold. This knife will get sold to one of you guys, either this one or the Endura. Depends on which one I want to hold on to more. I do like this. Um, but one of those two $70 knives are going to get sold because they've been carried for about 50 bucks um and i can you know if somebody wants something cool like me to put my maker's mark my initials on it or something i can do that if if that's something someone wants you know nothing fancy project does that but uh yeah i don't want to be associated with nothing fancy project mm. anyway so the plan is that i will i will acquire things cheaper things at the 50 to 60 dollar mark sharpen them, review them on the channel, and then sell them for, you know, a little bit less than I paid for them because they have been carried. And then take that money and add it back to the $78 that I get every month and then keep doing that. And as I accumulate, then, you know, $78 and then I buy something for 50 and then I sell it for 40 and then I get $78 plus 40. And then I just, you see what I'm saying? And then it keeps accumulating to the point where maybe I can get some Marfion Custom, something, that that's the plan. That $78 is the only thing that I'm not considering income. Out of all the money that I make, it's the only thing I'm not considering income. That only goes into the channel. So I have $140 minus this that is for my YouTube channel. Yeah, hundred. I have 70 something dollars. This was 75 or 76. Um, this thing is wicked. So that's the plan of the Patreon so that any of you that feel that I'm e-begging, it's not. It's just simply so I can keep this channel going. Um, 
I had stopped saying anything about it. I'm not going to stop saying anything about it. The other thing, and this is the first video I'm really going to put it out. I looked at how I was talking with some other YouTube makers. So likes don't, likes don't affect how much money I make on YouTube. And I made maybe $16 on YouTube last week, on last month. If, well, I can't tell you how much I actually made, but it was significantly less than $16. Um, so what happens is it's not so much that the likes affect how much revenue. The likes affect when your videos wind up being pushed to other videos because of their popularity, you get to see other people see your videos and, and it broadens the it broadens broadens my audience. So this is going to be the first time you've heard me, and I'm gonna do it a lot of times. If you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like my videos, give it a thumbs down, but go into comments and tell me what you didn't like. And do not be abusive in those comments. But yeah, if you like my videos, go in, give them a like, and it will make things... So we're at 955 subscribers. I started. I gotta start thinking about what I'm gonna do for that giveaway. Um, so keep that in mind. Have your, Get your questions ready because we're rapidly approaching the thousand subscriber mark. So like I said, like and subscribe. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. I do videos. You guys that have been following me for a long time know I do videos just about three times a week. Sometimes I'll do, today I'm doing two a day. Today I'm doing two today. I didn't do a video yesterday. I would like to get to where I'm doing a video a day. Um, I did get approached by a company in England to do a video that they're basically going to use as a commercial. So I will let you guys know when that happens because you guys are going to get to see me shave with a ceramic kitchen knife from a British company. They reached out to me. I've reached out to other companies and it's happened. You know, um, like I said, Raging Jap Knives. That knife, the more I carry it, the more I like it. And people can say what they want about it being a steel frame lock and it's at the price point of $120. I got news for you, it's worth $120 in my book. That thing is nice. I love that little knife. I carry it probably three days a week. I wanna send it to, to I wanna send it to Nick Shabazz, but when I send it to Nick Shabazz, I won't be able to carry it. As a matter of fact, that was in my pocket today. This was in my pocket after I came home and I went for a walk and because I took my dog for a long walk and we had to go through a pretty shitty neighborhood. What better thing to carry in a shitty neighborhood? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, YouTube has started with my videos again. I now have a video that when you look at the monetizing mark has a little yellow. Oh, this night, this video might not be friendly to our advertisers. And the whole thing was, it was the video about this one and the Tegral. There is nothing different about that video, about this knife and that other knife than any of my other videos. Every one of my videos is about knives, except for two videos that were about guns. Every one of them. And so now all of a sudden, my videos aren't advertiser friendly. That one isn't anyway. I don't know why. I don't know why, what happened. I don't know if there's search keys that say, I said weapon as opposed to tool. Um, but like we said, that's what this is. So, I want to do a video about that because that pisses me off. You know, I get it. PewDiePie said something. PewDiePie said something unpleasant in a video, but it's his channel. And then he lost so many subscribers, and then there was this whole downfall. But the flip side, I get pissed off, but then I have to remind myself, everybody thinks, now I'm on another tirade, and I have another tirade that I'm going to shoot right after this. There's going to be three videos today. Everyone thinks that social media is your playground to put out anything you want. And it kind of is. You can put anything you want out there. It'll show up. But you and I, I me, including me, have to understand and remember that that is their company. 
we look at YouTube as this social media playground. And what we have to remember is they have to look at those Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. They have to look at what's best for their bottom line. And so I'm upset, but the flip side is I understand. I do understand that they're a corporation and they have to, they have got to play to their, um, they have to play to their, to, to their money. The people that are doing the ads, if they don't want to monetize my video, then that's fine. That's why I joined a network because I guarantee the Freedom Network will put something on there. I won't make what I made last year, but at least I'm making something because this year I didn't make anything on YouTube. So, all right, like I said, like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Um, I am going to try and increase content. I, I'm probably never going to be the guy that has the the, the thumbnails with the the cool things and the anim, and the animation at the end and like the like and subscribe at the end and and the little tabs with links and things. I will never be that guy. I'm always going to be bare bones. I'm doing this because I like doing it and I do it this way because I think it's as down to earth and commonplace and the way that most of my people that would want, most of the people that would want to see my videos, this is what they would want to see. Me in my kitchen, bare bones, being it simple. Um, and last thing, I have to do a shout out to a YouTube video guy that I just found the other day and it's fucking hilarious. Running on empty food reviews. If you have never watched any of his videos, that young man is hilarious. And he does it deadpan and silly. He does food reviews. He wears a suit, drinks out of a goblet. It's fucking hilarious to watch somebody eating a McDonald's cheeseburger and doing a full-on feud review as if he was a food critic in a suit. It's hilarious. Go watch his videos. You really should. Um, so, on top of that, there will be a third video for today. I don't know if I'm going to get them all posted, but I am going to shoot a third video because the tirade that was the end of the video I put up the other day about quality and Chinese made knives and things like that, that's coming up. But I'm not going to subject you guys to that on top of what you've already seen. So, like I said, detent on this is massively sometimes if you've got your finger on it. Um, this, I just wanted to get this done. Um, there's not a lot to talk about about this knife. There's not. It's a gorgeous knife. I just, the fact that I get to do some of these things because Elliot is so accommodating, so kind, is awesome. And if you guys don't follow Ferrum Forge Knife Works, you probably should follow him on Instagram. Elliot let me have this knife to bring home. I've had it. <laughs> I told him I'd have it for a few days. I've had it for almost a month. Never asked once about it because he knows it's coming back. Did the video about the Stanger XL. This one got sharpened while I was doing a live Instagram feed. The Emler Edge. It is a thing that is offered by Fair and Forge Knife Works. If you don't know about it, find me on Instagram. You can see most of my pictures are goofy shit that don't pertain to anything, but it is a business page. Um, I'm going to start doing some more before and after pictures of things when they come in and posting them up in macro. So, all right, that's it guys. I'm out of here. Like and subscribe. Have a good weekend and I'll see you next time.